Now we can look at some covalent bonding. And covalent bonding, again, what we're looking at is the nonmetals and how they share electrons. So they're, they're not going to transfer electrons, now they're going to share them. And that, the electrons are what's holding those two uh, non-metallic uh, atoms together. And so suppose you had an atom over here with a, that, that has a, a proton and an electron, and this guy has a proton and an electron. Eventually they're going to get close enough together where this proton can see both the electrons and this proton can see both of these electrons. And so you can maximize the attraction between this proton and both of these electrons and this proton and both of those electrons while minimizing the repulsion between the two protons and the two electrons because the opposite charges, the opposite, oppositely charged particles will be attracted to each other. The like um, charges will repel each other. And so that's the optimal bond distance is when you've maximized that attraction and minimized the repulsion. And that's really what a covalent bond is. The atoms get so close together that their nuclei, which is where the protons are, the nucleus, they're going to see both of the electrons and, and that's what's holding them together. So a bond, in a, a covalent bond, is it's just sharing these two electrons. That's what's holding the, the two atoms together. And so we can try to figure out, you know, how many bonds uh, or how many, you know, nitrogen and fluorine atoms to have to get together in order to form um, a stable compound. So if you think about what nitrogen looks like, nitrogen has five valence electrons. And if you forgot that, you can just go back over to your periodic table. We have one, two, three, four, five. So there's nitrogen. He's got five electrons, uh, five valence electrons. And fluorine has seven. Each of the fluorine is going to have seven valence electrons. So if we're looking at the octet rule, let's draw nitrogen, whoa, there we go, nitrogen right here uh, has one, two, three, four, five. So if he has to get eight electrons, he's going to need to share some with a fluorine. And so fluorine has seven valence electrons, so let's look at fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if he gets really close here, they'll be able to share that one electron. They'll, they'll each be able to share one electron. And so now fluorine has eight electrons around it, and that nitrogen now sees another electron. So if nitrogen does this with um, two more fluorines, so there's a bond there, and one more. So they're each kind of sharing that electron. Now everybody's happy. So you're kind of like double counting the electrons when you're trying to count eight around each one. So fluorine has two, four, six, and then he had one of his own, and now he can also see nitrogen. So he's happy having eight electrons around it. Each one of the fluorines are, are doing that. And then nitrogen had the two, three, four, five, and then he's going to share six, seven, eight from all the fluorines. And so this is why that makes this a stable structure. So really, NF3 will be pretty stable. And we'll do this a little bit more systematically when we start drawing um, Lewis, um, yeah, Lewis diagrams, Lewis structures. Uh, but let's look at, at more covalent, different types of covalent bonds. You can have a polar bond, you can have a nonpolar bond. So polar bonds just mean that you're sharing electrons unevenly. So one atom is, is stealing the electrons more than the other. And whoever, the one that's going to steal the electrons more is the one that's more electronegative. So electronegativity is just the ability of atoms in a molecule. So you're talking about just in a bond, um, the ability of that atom to attract electrons to itself. And it turns out that fluorine, fluorine is the most electronegative um, atom. So fluorine is here, and everything increases towards fluorine. So that's the trend, right? Remember those periodic trends we did in Chapter 7? Same idea here. It increases over, and it increases up. So down here are a whole bunch of electronegativity numbers. And notice the um, noble gases are missing because they don't form any kind of covalent compounds. They are monatomic gases. They don't really form any compounds. So that's why we don't have to worry about what their electronegativity is because they're not going to form bonds. Um, so if you're wondering why they're gone, that's why. So everything increases towards fluorine. And then to figure out if you have a polar or nonpolar or an ionic compound, ionic is easy. You're going to have a metal and a nonmetal. The metals are over here. They have really low um, electronegativity numbers. And then over here, they're really high. So metal, nonmetal, they're going to have a big difference. And so if you have a big difference, that's going to be an ionic compound. You're going to have a metal and a nonmetal. Um, if it's not a very big difference, you're going to have a polar, uh, sorry, a nonpolar covalent bond. And so something like, if you look at some of these pictures down here, you have fluorine, you have F2. Well, if you look at the difference in electronegativities, 
That's what these numbers are here. This is the difference, the change, the difference in electronegativity. So you just look at both electronegativity numbers, take the big one, subtract it, <laughs> subtract the small one from the big one, and that's what you get. So for like F2, that's just two F molecules. That means I have uh, 4.0 minus 4.0, oops, lost my decimal. Um, that's going to be zero, so that has a difference in electronegativity of zero, so that's obviously going to be nonpolar. But if you look at HF, H has uh, a 2.1, and fluorine is 4.0, so if you do 4.0 minus uh, 2.1, your change in electronegativity, your difference there is 1.9, which is right over there in the polar range. And you might look at that and say, oh, wait, it could also be ionic. But it's not ionic because it's not a metal and a nonmetal. It's two nonmetals, so it's going to be a polar bond. Lithium fluoride, however, lithium, it has an electronegativity of 1, and uh, fluorine is 4. So that change, that difference there, is three, and so that's definitely going to be in the um, ionic range. So you can use this little table here to help you figure out: do you have polar, or, or is it polar? Is it nonpolar? Is it ionic? Um, the bigger the difference in electronegativity, the more polar the bond is going to be. And if you have a really, really big difference, which happens when you have a metal and a nonmetal, then you'll have an ionic compound. But we're mostly going to focus on these, these polar versus nonpolar. So a bond dipole is just when the two atoms share electrons unequally. Ooh, and so here, we can look at some more of these. So let's try to figure out, using the table above, so take a minute and look up the electronegativity numbers for all these atoms, um, and then look at the differences, and whoever has the biggest difference is go going to be the one that's the most electronegative. So take a minute and, and look those up. Okay, so when I look these up in the table, if you go over here to boron, you can see boron is 2, carbon is 2.5, and chlorine is 3.0. So there's boron is 2, chlorine is 3.0. So that difference here, that change, that difference in electronegativity uh, for this first one is 1, and the second one is 0.5. So you just have to figure out which one's bigger. A bigger difference is 1 compared to 0.5, and so you'd say BCl is the, uh, the more polar bond. Do the same thing for PF and PCl, and take a minute. You can look those up and do them yourself. So phosphorus is 2.1 and fluorine is 4.0, so that difference is 1.9. And then PCl, 2.1 and 3.0, so that difference is 0.9. So the bigger one, I don't know why that keeps happening, the bigger one is going to be the 1.9. So PF will be the more polar bond. And the last thing we want to mention um, is just looking at now just a, little, a few more examples here, comparing HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. If you look at all these electronegativity differences, HF is going to have the biggest difference because fluorine's the most electronegative, and then this will be slightly less than that one, and then less, and then less. So they, they keep decreasing that difference in electronegativity. So HF would be the most polar bond, HI would be the least polar bond. And we're gonna, these pictures, this, that difference in color is kind of showing how polar the bond is. And we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to create these pictures in Spartan when we do our, um, our lab seven.